Moving on to another word problem. So let's say you invest $10,000 in 2005 and it grows to $15,000 by 2012. How much will the investment be worth in 2020? So let's draw a timeline actually of what's going on here. So let's say here we are in 2005 investing $10,000. By 2012, it grows to what, 15,000? And now this question is asking, how much are you gonna have in 2020? Right, so we're looking for that amount here. So how can we figure that out? Well, perhaps we can make an equation using these two pieces of information here. So we know the initial value is $10,000. And then in seven years, from 2005 to 2012, that's seven years, it's growing to 15,000. So we know the general exponential formula is final amount is the initial amount, one plus r to the power of t. So what can we fill in here in this formula? Well, we know the final amount is 15,000. We know the initial amount is 10,000. We don't know what the growth rate is, but we know that it's going from 10,000 to 15,000 in seven years. So notice here that in this equation, what we're gonna be solving for is the growth rate. So we can solve for that R here. And uh, once we solve for that R, then we have a general formula here initial value, one plus whatever that growth rate's gonna be. And then we could figure out with that formula what the value's gonna be in 2020, right? The T value is gonna be 15 then. We're gonna be plugging into the formula once we get it, because from 2005 to 2020, that's 15 years. But before we do that, let's solve for this R. So the way we do that, take both sides, divide them by 10,000. Right, to get rid of that in front. So 15,000 divided by 10,000, that gives us 1.5. And that's gonna be one plus R to the power of seven. Now, how do we isolate for this R here? Well, when we have an exponent here that we wanna get rid of, we can just take both sides to the power of the reciprocal of that exponent. So this is like seven over one. So the reciprocal of that is one over seven. Right, so this is gonna be one over seven. And that makes sense because one plus r to the power of seven has to equal 1.5. So if we wanna get rid of that exponent, we would take the seventh root of both sides. Right, so for example, let's say we have x squared is equal to 25. How do we solve for x? Well, we square root both sides. So x would be the square root of 25, which would be five. Let's say we had x to the power of seven is equal to 25. Well, if we want to find what x is, then x would just be the seventh root of 25. Same thing here, right? Something to the power of seven. So to get rid of that exponent, we're just taking the seventh root of both sides. So basically, 1.5 to the power of one over seven is gonna be one plus r seven over one times one over seven just gives us one. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting 1.059634. I usually don't like to round it too much initially. So when we isolate for this R, bring the one over, basically R is uh, 0.059634, right? So the money is growing at 5.9634% per year. Now that we have the R, we also have the um, general formula. So basically the final amount, it's gonna be the initial amount, 10,000, and then one plus the rate. So 1.059634 to the power of T where t is the number of years. Well, if we want to find the final amount in 2020, as I mentioned before, we would just plug in a t value of 15, right? From 2005 to 2020, that is 15 years. When you do that in the calculator, 
that will give you the final amount in 2020. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting that amount there, $23,841.76. Right, so if you invest $10,000 at that rate for 15 years, that is the amount you end up with.